Hello and good afternoon. Welcome to another edition of the Young Voices Forum. Um, today we are going to talk about child rights in Ghana. Some people like to ask if children have rights and even if they do know that children have rights, they like to pretend that they don't matter and all of that. So today I have two important people with me to do a discussion on the rights of a child in Ghana. I'll just move to them quickly so that they can introduce themselves and tell us where they're coming from. Hi, welcome. Thank you. <laughs> Good afternoon. Good afternoon. My name is Margaret Wada. I work with UNICEF, based here in Tamale, as the Chief of Field Office. Okay. All right. So. Uh, good afternoon. My name is Jesus Sandy. I work with the Department of Children under the Ministry of Gender, Children and Social Protection okay. as the Regional Director for Northern Region. Okay. So um, let me quickly ask this. Um, who is a child? If we say someone is a child, at what age range are we looking at or um, what qualifies a child? Yeah, okay, thank you very much. Okay. I, I think a child, uh, when we talk of a child, okay, our national and international laws, okay. we are looking at somebody who is less than 18 years of age. But um, as a country, we, uh, we also have our cultural norms and our culture talk sometimes... About child yeah. Our culture sometimes depends how we view individual. Yeah. And so if you look at the government of Ghana and its development partners, we have come out with uh, a policy we call the Child Welfare Policy. And now that, that policy has gone beyond the fact that a child is just anybody who is less than 18 years to kind of have uh, some cultural perspective from if you look at any person or any person who is still under the control of his or her parents. Okay. For instance, you might be uh, 20, 30 years. But once you are still under the control of your parents, they see you as their child. And per our cultural norms, they will still see you as their child. And so per that policy, we talk of people who are even adults. But once you still live within the same roof uh, uh, with your parents, you are still considered as a child. Okay. And so, but uh, legal speaking, once you turn 18 in Ghana, you are not a child. Okay. Okay. So um, let me ask this to um, do you have anything to share on that? Who you think you? I think he has uh, given mm -hmm. an actually accurate definition mm -hmm. because even on the Convention on the Rights of the Child, a child is is a um, described as any human being under the age of eighteen years. But you go to some countries, maybe where the age of majority could be less. I mean, an age where a child. They allow, um, the, the child can get married and it's allowed at the age of 16, so some, you know, but technically uh, and, and, and by law, uh, a child should be any human being under the age of 18 years of age. Okay, so um, now let, let me ask, who owns a child? Thank you. Yeah. Uh, as to who owns a child, I think before uh, a human being, <laughs> yeah. a human being is brought forth, yeah. it, it, has, it, it takes two, two people in our mm -hmm. setting. We hear of transgender and issues like that somewhere. Yeah. But in our culture setting, let's, let's look, localize it to, to the issues in Ghana. Yeah. You know, it takes a man and a woman to bring forth a child. A child. And we also know that there should have been some laid down procedures as the man going through the marital procedure that laid down to do what is required of our cultural or legal system to get somebody to record the wife before they move in and you know whatever happens then a child is brought forth so traditionally speaking a child belongs to he who that brings the child forth and mm -hmm. we're looking at our cultural setting he that too uh, before now, we had we, we saw we saw a child as a community, somebody who belongs to the entire community or the entire family to a very large extent. Even though that is beginning to change, which form of us don't really like because we see a child as somebody that belongs to a community mm -hmm. when the biological parents are for one reason or other not available to intervene when the child is is exposed to harm. Somebody should see the child as his or hers to intervene to rescue the child. Yeah. But there, there are, aside even the, child, the parent not being physically available at the moment, there are some children who happens to lose their parents for one reason or the other. And 
I'm talking about orphans here. Yeah. It should be a family system or a surviving relative yeah. who should step in to take care of that child. So a child, from my perspective, is brought forward by just two people, or maybe uh, just two people, but the child should belong to, should be seen to belong to the community or the family in which those two parents belong. Okay. So basically, that's what I will say for now. All right. So interesting perspective, yes. Madam Madam. You're, you're right. Because when I was growing up, uh, I always had that a child belongs to the community, and anybody in the community could correct the child if the child made any mistake. Okay. But then, if a parent makes a mistake, who corrects that parent? <laughs> so the the community, but also the government, and and legally, uh, government is the primary duty bearer. Is, the, is, is, I would say, the owner, for lack of a better word, of the child. Because he, if a, a, if a parent abuses, we, we have the right to take the, child, the parent to court so that they can, you know, the court can take its processes. Because, so they, there is the community bearer, who is basically the government, and then the parents, and then the community at large. And you and I, everybody owns the child, okay? at, at least from our African context. Okay. Yes. So um, let me ask this too. I think, don't you think that um, this perception that um, the community the owns a child somehow creates some sort of interferences in people's parenting? It does, and it 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 uh, it helps, and it doesn't help. So it has its advantages okay. and it has its disadvantages. Mm. I think from an African perspective, when the community owns a child, if they found a child misbehaving they would stop the child. Mm -hmm. They would correct the child and say, stop, and even bring you home and tell your father or your mother, this is what the child was doing, and I've been able to correct that, that, that mistake. But as we have advanced now, the way we live in our communities, the modern society now, uh, if I come and, and stop your child from throwing a ball into my window, uh, you, will, you will take me to court and say that I am I'm interfering with your parenting. So there, there, there are those two uh, <laughs> angles to it. So there's a positive way of, of looking at it when the community is responsible for the child. But at the same time, uh, because things are changing, you realize that I will pass by and see a child misbehaving and ignore and say, that's not my child, and move on. Meanwhile, I can correct it, yeah, the, yeah. the issue. So, so it, it, has, it has its um, pros and cons. Yeah. Okay. So, um, do children have rights? Certainly, children, just like any other human beings, we have rights. And, uh, because I'm asking, because you know, from our African setting, it, it, it sort of feels like children don't have rights. It's like you are told what to do, you are, you are told what to wear, and all that. Yeah. Uh, you and I are adults. <laughs> the rights we have, children have it. Okay. That aside, yeah. As long as they have vulnerability, the fact that they need to be guided. Our constitution has found a space in it to create another form of, if you like, uh, issues of a uh, bunch of rights for children specifically. And those are the reasons why we see them as children. Because um, as adults, we have uh, issues to, 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 to deal with. And it takes a state sometimes to intervene in our issues of or whatever. But for children, it, it doesn't just take the state, it takes international bodies okay. to intervene on behalf of children to ensure that all their rights are things that they can actually realize here and now. Because they are, some of their rights cannot wait. In fact, almost all of them cannot okay. wait. They have, they have got to I mean, enjoy them whilst they are children. And there are a, a number of these rights. Okay. So it's fundamental freedoms, like yeah. he's saying. A child is born with a right. Okay. So whether we like it or not, you know, the child has is entitled to those rights. And like he, I'll just give an example. When a child is born, the automatic uh, reflex is for the child to be breastfed, True. to be given something to eat. So whether in our context uh, we say that they have no right, they have the right to be fed. And if, if the people around you will come and ask, why aren't you feeding the baby? And you'll see everybody coming up in arms yeah. because they know that that is the right of the child. So yes, a child has a right and a child is born with the rights. Okay, so if you just joined us, this is the Young Voices Forum coming to you live from Subsign TV. The topic for discussion today is on child rights with special focus on the rights 
of the child and I have a very interesting panel here um, talking about this so you can leave your comments in the comment sessions you can leave your questions in the comment session and would be attended to so um, back to child rights um, do you what are some of the rights children have uh, I think a lot of rights children have Okay. Yeah, we, 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 if we're going to talk about... Okay, so you give me a few words and I'll take a few from Madame, <laughs> Madame okay. Margaret. Yes, too. Uh, Auntie Maggie was just talking about the fact that when the child is born first, the yeah. very first thing you do is to breastfeed the child for... I mean, you are, uh, our, our, our health people will tell you that you need to breastfeed the child shortly after uh, birth. That aside, it's also the fact that the child needs a name. Yeah. And if you look at traditionally, the, the traditional people do it, the Muslims do it, the Christians do it. Whichever way you do it, the most important thing is at the end of the day, the child needs, has to bear a name. And the name the child bears has, mm -hmm. has got to be locked with who brought, who brought for that child. The mother's name is found on the, uh, the child's birth seat as well as the father's name. And to a very large extent, where the child is coming from. So one fundamental right of the child is the right to name. That is one thing that um, most of us think we should be doing for children and our constitution has actually allowed us to make sure that for the very first time, uh, uh, within seven days from the, day from the date of birth, the child is given a name. And uh, everybody should encourage, well, we encourage for community, uh, community members to come around. It's, it's more or less a form of merry making to welcome the child formally and to give the child a name. Aside the fact that the child has the right to name, the child also has the right to the parental property. Uh, that is why it becomes very difficult when the, the, the responsibility of pregnancy is not ascertained before the child comes forward. Okay. Because um, the child is entitled to the whatever, but be the property the parents have be it within wedlock or out outside of, out of wedlock. Okay. Once it is agreed that you are responsible for the pregnancy, the child is entitled to your property. Mm -hmm. So you don't tell me that it was in Islam, when I don't marry you uh, formally, I don't wed you and I get you pregnant. Yeah. The one the doesn't recognize you as my child. And for that matter, you cannot inherit from my property. That, for our laws, is a no, no, no. Once it is agreed that you are the one who is responsible for bringing forth that child, the child is entitled to a property, irrespective of whether we do have lock or outside. And of course, when those children grow, the right to education is another thing that we have denied a lot of parents and a, a lot of children. And I think uh, if, if we, we talk about them, we, we, it would better even we limit ourselves to those that our children here are normally denied. Okay. Because uh, the right to education, as I'm trying to constitution, every child, every free compulsory, everybody has the right to, to eat. Yeah. Unfortunately, it's not one, uh, it is one thing that most children are not enjoying. You know, if you go to the community, you see that children of school go eat are still not in school. And that is worrying. Their right to education is being violated. Okay. Aside the right to education, children also have the right to live with their biological parents. Okay. Once, uh, it's another thing around here. Uh, our traditional norms have made it with that. Um, you can, uh, you can actually give your biological daughter to your sister elsewhere to take care of. And uh, initially, there was a good reason for it. It, it brought about family cohesion, the family harmony, and in fact, there are children who went that way actually were treated as the children of whoever they were still. Unfortunately, that thing has taken a negative dimension. And I think uh, if our fathers are listening, and even our sisters, and, and, and mothers, if they are listening, it's one thing I think they should put their eye on. Mm. Where you give your child to your sister, if, if, if at all you must do it, then be, still be responsible for that child's upbringing. Still be, still be in that child's life. Once a while, go to monitor what in the court the child is. It should, should be something that you, the parents, should do. But unfortunately, for us here, once they give out, they yeah. are giving out, mm -hmm. and, and that, that ends it. So the right to stay with a child's parent is a, mm. is 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 enshrined in our constitution, and mm. let's not take it away from those children because what they can share with you growing up, there where the challenges they go to school and face, they can share with their biological parents. Most likely, uh, they're not. 
Okay, yeah. They don't get to share, share what? with whoever they are still with, other than their biological parents. So they are a gamut of child rights for children, specifically. But what you and I enjoy as adults, they equally enjoy it. That aside, they have a host of uh, other rights to the right to be to ref uh, refuse to be betrothed to mm. a a man of your age, let alone what we do down here. It is the child's right. The child should, should grow to to have a stake in mm. who he, she, she marries. Okay. It should not be the case that I'm sitting there and before even I I get to know who I am. Yeah. Somebody I'm responsible for so, so, somebody. Somebody sure. is sitting down there thinks that my whole body is, is his. Yeah. And um it, it is certainly not the way to go at this age. So there are there are, these are some of the things that I think in other sector here we have challenges with and I I treat parents who are listening to at least uh once you are born a woman or a girl, there's no way you won't end up in a man's house. So why the rush? Yeah. So I think so. Okay, so um, I would, before I go to Madam Margaret, I think um, I want to give out my first airtime at this point. So if you are watching us, I am giving out Vodafone airtime. And if you do get it, please indicate it in the comment section. And I also want to remind you that this program is sponsored by Simavi, GH Alliance, and Gabby's Beauty Parlor. So um, I'm giving out the air, Vodafone airtime, and the numbers are as follows, fastest fingers as usual. Eight seven two two five nine nine one four one five eight one seven. And um, I repeat eight seven two two five nine nine one four one five eight one seven. That is Vodafone at time. If you get it, do indicate it in the comment section and please keep your questions and your comments coming we have um minutes a lot of minutes to go so i would appreciate your thoughts and your questions too so madam margaret now um back to you know, the the child right the, 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 the rights, rights of, of the, the child. child yes um one basic one that we usually deny our children very <laughs> basic is the right to play <laughs> Yeah. Children have a right to play. That's true. I remember um, <laughs> we used to be told, you're too dirty, why are you dirty? Why are you, you know, stopping children from running around and playing? Stop playing, stop playing. And, you know, a child has a right to play because it's part of their development. Sure. So they should be given that opportunity sure. uh, to play. The child has um, a right to information. Yeah. yeah. The child should be told what's going on. Right now we're in the context of COVID-19. Do the children in my household know what it's all about or are they hearing it out there? They have a right to be told this is the right information, this is what you should know about COVID-19, etc. And they should be given the opportunities to explore because they have a right to explore and to find out. But then it's, it's, it's in line with that child has a right to be protected against abuse of any form. So as a parent, as a caregiver, as, as, as a guardian, we have the responsibility to ensure that we protect the child against any, any issues of, of abuse and neglect. The child has a has right to um, the, the child has has a right to to stay within the family, yeah. right? So the child should not be separated unless it is not it's unavoidable. And if they are separated, the child has a right to get contact with their family wherever the family is. So the child has a number of, of, of rights. About fifty four of them. A child wow. right to proper nutrition. It's yeah. actually a right yeah. wow. to proper nutrition. Not just fizzy drinks, Coca-Cola, uh, Fanta, uh, what, what do you call it? Um, a lot of these fizzy drinks, drinks and chips. Yeah. And we think that we are feeding our child when we, when we buy them uh, ice cream and all these things. They have a right to proper nutrition, proper health, clean water and sanitation. It is the right of the child to, to, to use a toilet, uh, to have a toilet and to use it, to keep clean. So all these are fundamental rights of the child, among many others that we haven't talked about. Okay, so um, I have a comment here from um, Raphael Maclay, and, and he's asking that children have rights, but what is the difference between parenting and the right of the child? I, I think what's trying to see, say is, um, at what point do we say 
okay, so this is parenting. Mm -hmm. And at, at what point do we say, no, this, this child is supposed to enjoy this, this right? Like, you know, there's a thin line between, yeah. Mm -hmm. So at, at what point do we draw the line at parenting? And, and at what point do we draw the line at child rights? Um, I think uh, it's very clear that whatever we do, I mean, whichever, you know, whether we are parenting or gui guarding or guiding, it has to be in the best interest of the child. So at any point when we are parenting is our core responsibility as a primary caregiver and a primary duty bearer. So my role as a parent is to ensure that the child gets these rights. Is I, I, I ensure that the child is enjoying the rights. I provide for the child. And a key role is to guide the child and say, OK, if you climb that tree, you have a right to play. But if you climb that tree, you will fall and you will break your shoulder. I'm parenting, but I'm allowing the child to, to enjoy their right. Okay. Right? Yeah. Okay. And meanwhile, the child also has a responsibility. So rights also come with responsibilities. Mm -hmm. The yeah. child has a responsibility. If I'm told not to climb that tree because I break my shoulder, then the child knows I, my responsibility is not to climb that tree. So that parenting and, and, and responsibilities right. yeah. go, go together. So those are the, I think that would be my... Um, yeah, take on that. Let me, let me hear from Mr. Idris, sir. Yeah, I think uh, my understanding of this issue has got to be uh, giving children uh, unlimited freedom. And yeah. some people say, uh, uh, they say unlimited freedom is distraction. Mm -hmm. It's like, when should we know that even though we should like to play, yeah. but yeah. at what point do I step in as a parent? Inst instill some discipline, discipline into it, such that it, yeah. it doesn't get out of hand. Or even the right to, about most of, almost all the rights, yeah. there seems some kind of limitations to it. I, I do agree with him, but. The issue of uh, is how our, uh, do parents take it? Disciplining each other, our visual, uh, uh, I mean, I will to the communities. And sometimes what you hear is that it's because of child rights that the children, they have allowed the children to, to do whatever they are doing. Yeah. I, I'm not sure that was the, the, the motive for which the child rights took the kind of ways it took those days and yeah. it took it. Yeah. It, it, it is because we felt that children were too much at the receiving end mm -hmm. that uh, we needed to let the parents understand that uh, these children you are you are you are, you are dealing with they are fragile yeah they, they are delicate a little bit of uh, anger would, would would just undo all that you have done for the child for instance uh, a child who bed was is still assumed to, to be somebody who doesn't know what he or she is doing. Yeah. Like, you know, in our uh, uh, social media, in the, in the, uh, the traditional media we heard of that three year old who was. Yeah, that was uh, um, beaten severely, exactly. yeah. The father could have felt that he was, doing, he was parenting the child not to have uh, uh, gone to bed wet at that, that instant. Age, yeah. However, the age at which this child is doing, but, the question you ask yourself is, was the father actually right? Was he actually parenting? Was he guarding and guarding as Mr. Uh, Auntie Maggie said? Yeah. So, so our, our basically where the thing line is, is that let's differentiate between what we can do for the children and what we cannot do for them. For instance, what, when you say you want to allow a child to play, it's, a, it's the child's right. But where is the child play? Is the place even safe in the first place? Okay. What have you done yourself as a parent? To ensure that the child doesn't play with anything at all, in, especially in this community time that every child is at home. How do we provide them safe uh, places to play? We we have not done that. Then the child goes out to play in that risky environment, mm -hmm. comes up back with uh, a problem, and you tend to blame those of us who say the child should play, or we tend to blame the child for going out to play. What role do you play as a parent to ensure that your child play but play safely? Yeah. So I think we have to begin to understand as parents that the issue of child rights has come to stay. Responsibility of the child is one thing those of us who advocate for child rights are equal advocating for. Children will have to be responsible at a certain stage. Yeah. But majority of the responsibility should come from the parent. Because when the parent doesn't do what he or she is supposed to do, the consequences on the child, how outweighs what the child, the consequences on the parent if the child feels to do what he or she is supposed to do. We are looking at it from the point of view of the child. We are a child focus here. Yeah. So that is why we would normally 
just look at it from the perspective of the child mm -hmm. rather than the parent. But all we ask from parents is that, yes, the child is your child. There's something we call positive discipline. Yeah. If the child goes against, um, the, if you have laid down some rules and regulations, the child goes against them. Okay, so let me, let, me, let me put a pin on the positive discipline. I think we'll circle back to that. Um, um, but one thing before you sure that, no. uh, the, the reason why we need to parent is because the children have not reached an age of majority they cannot make decisions uh, properly they cannot take care of themselves properly and therefore there needs to be an adult they have not properly matured so they need an adult around them to guide them just to sorry oh, to oh no problem so um there's a comment from Kweku and Kobia and saying that I love the talk on the rights of the child, but I believe we should not leave the, we should not leave it at the rights, but also at the responsibilities of yeah. the child. Yeah. And it's also asking, I think it's mentioned something like right to privacy. Do yes, children sure. have something yes. like that? Sure. Yes. Okay. Sure. Very interesting. They do. They so when when you say right to privacy, when it comes to a child, what are we looking at? Because you know, I, I remember when when I was a kid, like my mom would just Bad is my room, and then leaves without even closing the door. I used to be so mad. So I used to be so mad. So I used to like what 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 is privacy? When when it comes to children, we say children have the right to privacy. <laughs> what are we talking about? Yeah, I, I feel like it uh, did make the point that uh, mm. children have the right to information, mm -hmm. and uh, information is is very key, especially these day, these days of technology. Yeah. Uh, but that information should be guarded, as she, 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 was, she, she would have put it. The information should be guarded. What information do we give to the children? Yeah. The child's body is the privacy. I mean, not even you, the father or the mother, can have access to it. Yeah. Because of the child's age, it, she has a body. When they begin to grow small, small, yeah. it's just where those days you come to a woman and lie down with you now, She's beginning to realize that no. Well, she, she, she come to you nakedly without feeling anything. But now, even when she's in the room and you don't look as you are supposed to do, and yeah. then and she, well, she was wearing towels, she wear it well. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yes. So the, the child has the right to privacy. Mm -hmm. Even though uh, you may feel like the, the information the child should, 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 should share with you, should, uh, there should be no limit to it. But yeah. it's not everything that the child should share with you. Yeah. We encourage them, uh, parents, to bond with children mm. so that to a very large extent they, they, they can feel at home sharing with them what actually bothers them. Th some of it might be even be personal. Yeah. But there is a limit to what the child can share. And it is his or her right to keep it to herself. Oh, okay. If he feels giving it out to you would not be safe. Okay. So, um, um, Kweku and Kobe are still asking that who determines what is the best interest of the child? Who, who determines what is the best interest of the child? What is in the best interest of the child? Yeah, what is the best interest? Of, I think maybe, um, you know, sometimes certain things happen and then people say that, well, it's in the best interest of the child. Like, um, I, I think that there's probably a legal backing to yeah. that. So, like, who determines that this is the best interest of a child? I think there are a lot of things that determine the best interest of the child. Okay. First and foremost is your own household, uh, what you agree on uh, as, as a family, what your, what your values are and, and what, what, what the norms are within your, your surroundings. The law also provides what the best interest of the child is. And then, uh, for lack of a better word, common sense also dictates sure. what, what, <laughs> what's the best interest of the child. But sometimes, like the example we give on, best in, uh, or on bedwetting, you could think that you're doing the right thing, but it's always to determine if I do this for this child, will I be harming the child? Will I be doing more harm on the child? So if it does not harm the child, it does not put the child in a more vulnerable position. If it does not uh, put the child in a situation where uh, they can actually not enjoy those rights, then it is not in the best interest of the child. So you have to determine all these factors first and then agree and, and see that, okay, this is in the best interest of the child. Okay. So um, now let me cycle back to the part where you talked about positive discipline. Um, I think in recent times there have been a ban on corporal punishment in schools. I don't know if it's in effect like I'm not in junior high or senior high, so I can't really tell. But I, I, I think 
is, is that right? Like a ban on corporal punishment in schools? Yes, I think that's right. Okay, so um, what other form of disciplines have been proposed? Like you mentioned something like positive discipline. Yeah. When you say positive discipline, what are we looking at? Because I feel like um, with a caning of a child or, you know, hitting the child was, was constituted as a form of discipline. Yeah. 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 So I, I just want to know. And people, they told like they have positive results to the king. So now I want to know if we are taking away corporal punishment, we are taking away hitting the child, what other forms of discipline do we have? Yeah, I, I think um, for those of, those of us who felt that the, the caning had positive uh, impact yeah. on the child, we actually didn't look at the other side of it. If you, if sometimes you go to, to these, these communities and those elderly, retired, um, civil servants, teachers, whichever profession, they say, but for Cain, I wouldn't be here. But he has forgotten that the Cain mm -hmm. actually has done a great harm to some of his colleagues. Yeah. Even he himself, without the Cain, he would have been better off. I'm not yeah. saying he's not better. Yeah. He would have been better off. Depending on how whoever uh, administered the Cain approach, would have approached the, 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 the child or, or for the crime, he supposedly committed. There are a host of other alternative forms of punishment that we would want parents to resort to, as well as teachers to resort to, rather than uh, the, the use of cane. For instance, the issue of positive discipline, all, I mean, all it talks about is that let the child benefit from the correction you are correcting the child. Okay, so what so, uh, what other forms? Let me give an example. So, okay. Yeah. Maybe just to just to chip in, uh, like to sub, uh, okay. uh, yeah, just to chip in. If a child is misbehaving in the house, yeah, and is is throwing tantrums, yeah, and does not want to behave, uh, you you can tell them, okay, uh, you will not participate, you will not watch your favorite TV sure. TV show, okay, for a day or for even two days. And so the others will be watching, and this child will be as well. You know, you you side time out. You give them time out. You tell them, okay, you go and sit at the corner in the corner of the room. Mm -hmm. Think about what you've done as we continue playing this game with the other children. So the child will feel deprived of this game and will start thinking and reflecting. And when you the, the, the parent can say, okay, let's come back and let's talk about the mistake you did. Uh, once they feel that they're being denied on some of these uh, you know, things that they enjoy they will start thinking about it. Two or three days. We are going for a party. You will not go to Swenso's uh, house because you did this, you misbehaved. The others will go, you will stay behind with me. And the child stays away with you and the others go. So even in, 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 even in our communities, uh, back in our communities, you will tell the, 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 the children, you will not go and visit Auntie Swenso this weekend. You have to stay because they enjoy going to Auntie Swen's so place. They stay back. You deny them something that they really enjoy doing for a short period of time, so that they can be able to um, to, to change and to think and reflect on on the mistakes that they have done. Some very simple um, corrective uh, forms, like in school, the teacher can also give them uh, extra things to do without uh, without subjecting them to um, to severe corporal punishment. Okay. I think as you say, it basically has to do with withdrawal of something pleasurable to the child okay. for, for the time being. It, it, too much of it might also not end up well with the child. Okay. For the time being, you let the child not do something that he would he would have preferred not to because of what he has done. And <laughs> you know what? Mm. You are going to enjoy this forever, provided you don't do that which I ask you not to. Okay. Basically, that is what that, that is what we are asking for from parents, and I'm not sure that's too much to ask. Okay. That you are saying you shouldn't discipline your children. Mm. Now, when it look like we have come to spoil the children. Yeah. You now, teachers are saying children are coming to school with uh, knives and stuff like that, and they cannot cane them because there's no caning. Is that the only way you can discipline a child? No. There are a host of other alternatives that you can resort to in disciplining a child aside caning. Okay. And, and they, most of them have been taken through that training. So it's just that we are so used to the cane and we still want to get stuck to it. Otherwise, there's, there are alternatives. Okay, so um, <laughs> this is interesting. Someone is asking that um, what does time out help with the child? And that if you give a child time out, are you not denying the child the right to play? <laughs> 
that is always the yeah, the that conflict, conflict. Yeah. yeah. You give them time out and you tell them what to do at that point in time. Exactly. I want you to think about it. I want you to reflect. Okay. Time for reflection. And you, like we've said, you have withdrawn them from something pleasurable yeah. for some time, but you're not denying them the right. <laughs> because they will come and play. They will play eventually. But this particular time, when yeah. they're, they're supposed to be playing, exactly. mm -hmm. um, we will not give you 30 minutes of play. We will give you 10 minutes of play. The other 20, we want you to sit at that corner, think about it, and write and let me know what you want to do about this behavior. Exactly. So it is, it, it's really, it's really um, being careful about how you, you, you juggle uh, the time out. And, sure. and, uh, oh, okay. So um, now let's talk about um, violation of a child's right. What do you do that at this point we can say that, okay, so we're violating a child's right? When you violate a right, you're actually denying them okay. the right. Denying them, um, denying a right consciously. Mm -hmm. A child is supposed to go to school, and you decide my child is not going to go to school, my child will stay home. Okay. Why? You have absolutely no reason. You are violating that child's, um, you're violating the right of that child to, to, to go to school. You deny the child food just because the child stole or took away your, your CD and you tell the child you're not going to eat, you're violating the child's right to food, right? So the, the violation is when you actually deny them, uh, deliberately deny them their right, you know, enjoying their particular right. So when you deny a child uh, good food, when you deny a child the opportunity to play or to maximize that time, when you deny the child clean water, you know, uh, when you deny the child uh, opportunities to, to sit down and, 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 and interact with their friends, or you don't want them to participate in your religion or in a religion that they're interested in, all these are violations. You're stopping the child from, uh, from, uh, from enjoying what would be their fundamental freedoms. Okay. Do you want to add something? Yeah. Um, yeah. Child rights violations are actually, as the Antima uh, says, when you seek not to do for the child, what their, their rights are. Uh, for instance, it, it is the child right to good health too. And uh, there's a local saying or language that if a child doesn't sleep, the mother certainly will not sleep. So the following day, when you are taking the child to hospital, you're not taking the child to hospital because you are sorry. Yeah. It's because the child needs it's medical attention. Yeah. So that is why we, uh, that's why we should begin to realize that Okay. What, what I'm doing for the child is in the best interest, going back to the issue, the best interest of the child. What you are doing should be, should, it should be the child who stands to benefit in the long run, in the short run, you know, whenever. It should be the child who is at the center of the benefit as far as what you're doing is concerned, and not you, the adult. But when the child, you refuse to do that, for all the rights we have mentioned, then you are typically violating Oh, right. Okay, so um, Kobia is asking a question and he's saying, um, what forms of discipline constitutes child rights abuse? And then she gives an interesting example. She says, if a father shouts down at a child um, and is considered as discipline, is that considered as discipline or abuse of the child, putting into um, consideration emotional abuse? <laughs> Uh, okay, emotional and <laughs> verbal. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah, verbal, verbal abuse, you okay. Child, uh, so, where, uh, where were you born? Where mm -hmm. do you come from? Mm -hmm. You know, those kind of things mm -hmm. are, are actually a uh, violation of the child. Yeah. It's, it's, it is, you can be firm. You can tell the child, I do not like the way you do things. Sure. You are misbehaving. You are doing A, B. You be straight. The father can be straight and very clear. Sometimes we are loud. I know our voices can be loud, but firm. You're telling the child firmly. But when it comes with hurling insults and including all those uh, things that are not favorable to the child, then it constitutes abuse. Yeah. I really yeah. think sometimes uh, it depends on from day one, the way we've also trained the child to behave. It's very important. Yeah. Some parents communicate with just by yeah. looking at you. You are doing something, he looks at you in a way, and the child gets to understand that, no, this man is not happy with what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. And then he, he is. But, some of us, uh, we have not done it from the one, the child goes to, we kind of like hardened somehow, and yeah. then you all of a sudden want to 
Not yeah. sure who is the man of the house. Yeah. It, it's very difficult to for the child to also I mean comply at that at that point. Let's begin as soon as the, the child comes home. The training starts. The training starts. Whichever way I mean there are certain things your religion don't, doesn't allow. If you think you're growing the child up in a religious way, let the child know from the one. Okay. They, they will begin to respect those values as they grow. Train but, a child in the way it should go. Then when he grows he wouldn't but no. when you fail to do this from day one, then the child grows to become happy. he's gone outside and has experience on life there. And you now want him to sleep at eight. When he's already used to sleeping at eight, yeah. after ten, eleven, it, it's going to be very difficult. And you say he's a spoiled child. Why are the others in the house not spoiled? Yeah. And the child too learns from the environment that they grew. That's the, what they see is what they put into practice. So from day one. Let's get realize that this is our, our, our blood and we need to tame them the way we want them to. And considering the fact that it should be in the eye. Okay. So um, if you are still watching or you just joined us, this is the Young Voices Forum and we are still um, having a conversation around child rights. Keep your questions and your comments coming. At this point, I want to give up my second time. So if you are watching and you use MC and you are in luck, <laughs> I'm giving out MC and airtime. And I still haven't received acknowledgement for who got the Vodafone airtime. If you did, do let me know. Or do I need to repeat it in case you didn't get the digit? So this is MTN, and the numbers are as follows. 822 Four one nine three seven six four four one. That is MTN airtime. If you get it, do indicate it in the comment session. I think the airtime is for those that are watching us. <laughs> okay, so um, another thing I, I, I want to talk about is. Um, there are a lot of um, child abuse just happen now. Um, that is, um, I don't know what I should blame the COVID-19 because these children are at home mm -hmm. and all that. And that, what are the roles of parents in ensuring that children enjoy their rights? In the context of COVID-19, yeah. um, of course, because of the restrictions that COVID has uh, brought along, yeah. you know, the pandemic has brought along, children have been forced to be confined within the within their homes within the environment where parents are actually strictly adhering to uh, to the protocols you'll find that children are confined to the home yeah and so one uh, you you find that they're not going to school so already uh, parents should make sure that when the children are home you've asked about the, the role of the parents right yeah so the children should ensure that when the children are at home they're properly occupied and parents are watching what are the children doing. Yeah. So organize themselves in such a way that they know where the children are, what they're doing. Because as you know, some children are using the internet, Facebook and all that. They're using internet for learning. Mm. And it's very easy for a child to divert and get into a site that's prohibited. So a parent should be able to put in certain measures uh, to ensure that they know what the children are watching, what the children are doing at a particular time. It's also very possible for the children to be overworked. Uh, we know it as adults now that we are working from home. Yeah. <laughs> There's a thin line between work and, and office and all that. Yeah. So you find yourself working, 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 working. And the girl child even suffers more because they are expected to do their domestic chores and now it becomes more during yeah. this time. So it's very easy for the girl child to be abused and we are hearing of such cases. Yeah. And, and so it's important for the parents to be able to realize, to regulate how much work the child does and distribute it equally amongst all the children in the house. Take on the heavier roles and let the children have adequate rest. Allow them to play, allow them to participate in their education uh, activities that they ought to do within this context of COVID-19. And I think one of the things, one of the, the rights that's really violated in this time is lack of information. Yeah. Children are getting, even we adults are getting a lot of information. A lot of it is not right, is not correct. A lot of it is myths. A lot of it is instilling a lot of fear in us. So I think it's the parents' responsibilities to, to actually understand COVID-19 themselves, get the proper information. 
and share that information with the children, discuss it with the children so that they can get to hear what are the questions the children have around COVID-19 so that they yeah. understand it and so that they can be able to deal with the issues that come up and not fear. And then also the other thing that parents should do is to ensure that they are there to the protocols themselves so that the children know what those protocols are. When they are going out, they know the limits because we've been told to stay home. Yeah. Where are they going? What are the limits out there? So all these things are some of the parents, uh, some of the things that the parents can do. But I think one of the things I'd like to say very, uh, very important is to ensure they are able to understand the psychological well-being of the children. Because you'll find that we've heard and we've read that there are a lot of, uh, in, there's an increase of sexual abuse sure. amongst children yeah. at this time. Yeah. They are confined within, within their homes. They're being abused by Adult, somebody yeah. adults within that, you know, they're also exploring their yeah. people, they're exploring amongst themselves, they're trying to explore their bodies and then engaging in some of these activities. So it's important that parents are able to talk to their children about these issues and to be able to try and, and, and learn to understand the, the body language of the children, create a space where the children can talk to them. Girls can come and say, I don't like it, some, uh, you know, whoever touched me yeah. inappropriately. And so they can discuss these issues of abuse before they actually happen. And if they do happen, provide the support for the child, the necessary support, and refer the child to the essential services where necessary. I don't know the director, you have anything to um, Before that, I think I, I, have, I have a question from Stephen Agbenu. And um, he's asking that, is grounding a, a child not a form of abuse of the rights of the child? There are actually two questions. And the other one is that in the context of Ghana, will going to the farm with the child during the weekend constitute abuse? So I think I... Child labor. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. Uh, and yeah. House, house chores. Yeah. yeah. OK. Thank so, you. yeah. Does. It's, it's, does grounding constitute child? We, we, uh, weekends, right? Mm -hmm. Going to the farm with the child. OK. We are talking about the farm one. I, was, uh, the, I think the first question is, is, is grounding a form of abuse of the rights of a child? Grounding. It's a fun, it depends on how it is. Okay. Because the parents will actually say you're not going anywhere for the rest of your holiday, you're not going anywhere. And you lock them up in a room. You know, that is abuse. Okay. Abuse. But if you tell your child today, this afternoon, for the next two hours, you are, or this two hours may be too long, but the next one hour, you're not going to do ABC. You're not going to play because you did a mistake. And if you correct that mistake in future, we will allow you to play and to interact with so and so. You're not going to, you're not going to, um, I'm not going to allow you to, to play with your sister or with your younger brother because you hit him. And so for the next two days, you are grounded. For one hour every day, for 30 minutes every day, you will be doing this. If it is very clearly defined and yeah. linked to the child, it is not a Okay. But if it is that uh, you are not going anywhere, you are not going to do anything, <laughs> you, the child has no food, has no water, nothing in a stuffy room, that is abuse. Okay. Okay. And then the farming. Um, what of the farming? That going to the farm with a child during the weekend constitutes child abuse, does it? During the weekend. During the weekend. Mm, I think... Uh, uh, Take it into consideration that children have a right to play. And I've been to school <laughs> from Monday to Friday <laughs> on the weekend. Please let me play. <laughs> okay. Basically, I, I do think uh, mo most of these things have got to do with the age of the child. Okay. Yeah. If you take our children's up, it talks about 8, 13, 15, and 18. Mm -hmm. At those various ages, what work can the child do? Yeah, but if the child is of that age that you can go to the farm actually with, what, what is the nature of work that you are going to ask the child to do for you? That is another, another thing. But besides that, taking children to our farms is a form of training for some of us. Exactly. And it, you know, most of these uh, parents depend solely on farming. So okay. to get the child to support you in farming is not an issue. But all we ask for, the question is simple, we can test it, mm. or maybe at school. Sometimes we really like this, mm. that's it. But not when the police are in school. Because it has rain to be, let's go to farm. Home. Okay. So, um, <laughs> taking a child to the farm is not child abuse, depending on the age of the child. And the time. And the time and the workload. And the workload. If they're bringing exactly. you as a child laborer, that is different. Okay. I mean, coming into the, the household, yeah. 
the nature of the work has, a, has got a lot to do because it may, it, 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 it may be detrimental to even the child's ability to, to participate meaningfully in his academic work the following day in school. His health, the health, health the physical development of that child. So the nature of the work is very important. But if it's not going to help you fetch water at that 13, 14, 15, you are, there, you are, you are also actually training them. And sometimes, I mean, that is allowed. Okay. So, um, um, to um, your, ch your advice on parents on child protection. But before that, I think I, I need to give out my last third time first. Before I'll come to you, advice to parents on child protection. Um, I think my last third time is Ethel Tigo. So if you use any of this network, you can get the third time. And then um, Kweku and Kobia says you got the MCN air time. Thank you, Kweku, for acknowledging <laughs> that. Uh, so <laughs> the numbers are as follows. This is Ethel Tigo, and it's 599 nine eight seven five four five five nine three three zero one eight five nine 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 eight seven five four five five nine three three zero one eight and that is et out to go if you get it please do indicate it in the the comment session um, and Kweku is saying i think the age of the child and the job they do on the farm would constitute abuse yes i think mr idrisu just um touched on that Kweku. so you can um um if in case you missed it you can go back on the video and then watch it so your advice to parents on child protection i think uh, especially on the uh, covid 19 yeah uh, auntie maggie has said a lot on it and uh, for me i think this is the right time for parents, let's see opportunity in this thing and take it to born with our children. Most of us cannot even spend time with our children a day. Before now, the COVID-19 has offered us that opportunity to a very large extent to born with our children. Let's befriend them so that when after COVID-19, uh, COVID-19, these children will be our, 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 our best friends. Mm. Another thing from parents, from where I sit, is that we all know that teachers have always played the role of parents when schools are in session. Now, we don't have teachers in the picture. It's, it's all about parent, parent, parent. That we are now by force turned uh, into teachers by force. Yeah. We have turned into pastors, <laughs> moms. moms. I mean, we have yeah. got to do that because we, that is the situation for now. Yeah. So let's not look those um, responsibilities. At the end of the day, the children will come out from the even stronger. And we do record the teenage pregnancies we are recording, and mm. it didn't just escalate down yeah. after COVID 19. Okay, so Madam Margaret, you are my parents. Listen to your children. Listen. There's a lot that you'll get to hear now from them. Either they'll vocalize it or you'll see it in their expressions. It's a worrying time for many of us. We don't know what, what is ahead. So the children are probably going through a lot of psychological and mental issues. Uh, worried about what's happening. So let's take our time and just listen to, to, to our children and then see how we can support them. Talk to your children, communicate, give them information, give them information. Listen to what information they have yeah. and then, you know, correct uh, wrong or, or right information. Mm. Engage them, let them participate in some of these things. Uh, I know there are places where you find a child telling you, oh, granny, you, they call me granny. Granny, wash your hands, you know? Yeah. Wash your hands. <laughs> Let them participate. Let yeah. them be part of, of the process so that they know and they know why it's important. And then uh, play with them. Yeah. Know, engage them. Engage okay. them so that it's, it's, it's a, they're part of the process. They understand what's going on. You allay their fears and they're enjoying what's happening uh, mm. around them. If you're giving them chores, distribute it evenly. Give them time to play. Organize them. Have some form. Children like order. All of us like order. When there's chaos in the household, it's very difficult. So when you help organize in the household, in the morning we're going to go, we wake up and I will do breakfast and so we'll do this. Then we'll go to the farm for 30 minutes and come back or one hour. You know, organize, help organize uh, uh, the children. That will also help you as a parent to get organized and to be able to, uh, to, make, to, to, to enjoy this 
uh, is it called uh, quarantine period? <laughs> <laughs> Lockdown, quarantine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and then also yeah. monitor what they're doing outside. Yeah. yeah. Because it's very easy for them to get into a situation mm -hmm. where they uh, get in contact with, with, with the virus. So okay. it's important that we work with them. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you wanted to say uh, something. I would, uh, I've said this at the beginning. Uh, this week is also the week that uh, was for the AUD of the African child. Okay. And actually, it was supposed to have been on a it, it normal celebration on the 16th of June. Okay. So on Tuesday, uh, most of us were on radio stations and TV stations to, I mean, uh, drive home the message of uh, this year's celebration. Right. It was on access to child friendly justice in Ghana. How, do, how does the justice system treat children? When they come into conflict or contact with their law. Yeah. So I just want to add that uh, this is we are still in the celebration mood. The, um, for the team, access to friendly justice. Even if you live friendly, you talk about justice alone, but for children, it is still not something that children are getting in Northern Ghana. Yeah. They will cover up when children are abused, yeah. handle them at home. Some of them are just not issues that should be settled at all. So please let's, let's do the files where there is the need to do. Report. Yeah. Report. Report. Yeah. I think the zoo is, is, is one area. The children's department is an area where is a place where, where parents can report. They can report to uh, dog zoo. And any, uh, I think they can. Uh, the NCC, yes. Shiraj, this, this are some there are places where they, can, where they can report. Yeah. So even children who know that there's something going sure. on and they cannot report it in the family. Um, I think some of these places, if they, they know a teacher, one of their teachers, or a responsible adult, or an imam, or a pastor, they should report. Sure. They have okay. So, um, all too soon, we have come to the end of our program. And today, I'm sure I've learned a lot, and I'm sure you've done so too. So, children have rights. We need to respect them and ensure that they enjoy their rights. So, I just want to say a big thank you. To you, the viewers, for tuning in for your comments and your questions, and also to my panel for taking time off their busy schedule to be here, and also to our sponsors, Simavi, GH Alliance, and Gabby's Beauty Parlor for my beautiful face beats. And thank you very much for joining us. And I always forget to thank the technical team because they always make it possible for you to be able to sit in the comfort of your home, so wherever you are, and enjoy this show. So. Thank you very much. And also stay safe. COVID-19 is as real as it can get. And the, the numbers keep surging up. So please do wash your hands properly under running water with soap. And maintain social distancing, use hand sanitizers. And if you don't have anywhere to go, please stay inside. Because the virus only moves when you do. So protect yourself and stay safe. So next week, Friday, this same time will come your way with the Young Voices Forum. Again, thank you very much for tuning in. We are very grateful. Bye. <laughs>